Okay, so this is me revisiting an old tutorial video I did like seven years ago now. Um, you can't see that video anymore, I and mean, for good reason. <laughs> but basically, I've always wanted to come back to this solo and get it down as accurate as I can properly. Um, you may or may not have noticed that in my photograph video, um, I don't quite play this solo the way Steve plays it. You know, I kind of just do my own interpretation of it. And what do I mean by interpretation? Well, I mean my inability as a 15-year-old to learn the solo properly. <laughs> um, but in fairness, the way I used to learn songs back then, uh, is I, I just watched the, you know, the In The Round concert, and I just try and play along. And of course, I wasn't hearing it on the best system back then, you know, just on an old TV, and I was, you know, was playing through a loud amp and that. Um, but what I find funny is that when I came around to do the cover, I don't know, what, I can't remember when it was, um, I never relearned really the solo, you know, I've, I've always played the solo the way I played it when I was 15. Well, there's like a couple of differences here and there, but, you know, I, just a hard habit to break, I guess. Um, and I realised that possibly some of my videos have become like references on how to play these songs, and they're not always going to be 100% accurate, and I'm always quite conscious of that. So uh, I always like to make sure that, you know, I have other references on, on trying to get it as accurate as possible. Um... So yeah, that's that's basically why I want to do this again. And what's cool is I've learned a couple of new things listening to it again more recently. So I think it's going to be uh, a good thing to do. So first of all, let's actually watch through the solo again and remind ourselves what I'm talking about. That for me is still like one of the coolest things to watch. I don't know, it's just something about that. It's like the solo, because it's different and it comes in earlier than the album version, um, kind of catches you off guard and it's really cool. And, you know, the solo itself is very melodic. Uh, you've got the visual elements as well, just Steve playing it. And then you've got these kind of visual elements. And, uh, you know, I think that whole package together just makes you go, Mom. I want to be a rock star. <laughs> but right, onto the solo, and uh, this is how I'm going to do it. I've written up my own tab, um, and I'll post it on my Facebook page, or I'll put a download link in the description. And uh, I'll just go through it line by line, and each line is kind of like a bar, or the main lick in that bar. Um, that's how I've broken it down. And I'll just go over it like at a moderate pace, uh, show you finger positions. I'll maybe try and explain any kind of symbols I've used there. Um, but I won't go into too much detail unless I need to. And there's a couple of little points I want to make on later licks which deserve more time. So um, I'll just play through this first line first of all uh, at a moderate pace and it should sound something like this. Okay, so a couple of things to point out there. Um, our home position is on the 12th fret, and what I mean by home position, this is where your first finger should lie. And then every kind of fret above that you should use a, uh, your next finger up. Um, except maybe for the pinky, you can substitute your third finger in there if you're not too comfortable with your pinky, that doesn't matter too much. Um, but yeah, we want to really stay around this home position and, and not move too much. And you want to try and use as many fingers as you can. It just makes it a little bit easier for yourself. Uh, so the first two notes there, you see we've got a line going from 12 to 14. That's a legato line. That means we're not going to pick that 14th note. We're going to hammer on to it, you know. Just hammering on my third finger there. So that's what that line means. Um, you look along the next couple of notes. After that uh, second 12 on the G string, we've got a kind of wave. Um, that just indicates vibrato. So just put a bit of a wiggle on it. Get to that 14th note there with the arrow going up the way, that indicates a bend. We have a 1 above it, which indicates that we're bending it up a full tone. Um, which means we're going to make it sound like the 16th fret. 
If it was a half above it, we'd make it sound like the 15th fret, a semitone. But it's a full tone bend, so we're going to bend it up a full tone. Now, it's kind of like a country like this, so maybe just point out the kind of fingerings you want to do here. When you're bending, you want to mostly bend with... Um, you want to have fingers behind your bending finger. That gives you the strength to bend up. So I'm using my third finger here, and that's going to just let me bring in my pinky for that 15th fret of the B. Yeah, so that's the kind of way you want to play it there. And you notice that when I play a 15th of the B, the 14th isn't ringing out. It's not doing... I'm, I'm muting it. And uh, I should maybe point out that muting the strings you don't want to ring out is a big part of guitar playing, you know. Um, most of the time, if not all the time, my palm's resting on the lower strings here. And I usually keep my pinky underneath the high E string here. And that just kind of cleans everything up and it just makes sure that the notes you want to ring out are the ones ringing out loud and clear. So it's maybe something to think about if you find, you know, certain things are, are popping out that you don't want to pop out. Um, just try and think about your muting technique, you know, both on your right hand and your left hand. So we've got that bend there. And then the next bend after that, we're back on that 14th. Bend that up and down. And then the line from the 14th to the 12th indicates legato again. So we're going to pull off after we do that bend and release. Just kind of... I'm not necessarily just lifting my third finger there, I'm pulling it downwards in that motion, pull off. That's what we're doing there. And a bit of a brattle on that 14th fret there. So I'll play through the line once more. Okay, next line. Uh, starting on the 15th fret of the B should sound something like this. Okay, um, the only new thing to kind of point out there, we have a little cluster of three notes, 12, 13, 12, with a line over it. And we're going to do both a hammer and pull off. Okay. Um, if you're struggling to get these first two lines down, um, you can always rewind the video. I'm just conscious I don't want to make this video too long and I want to focus on more of the uh, the later licks as shown. Um, but like I said, that's the only new kind of symbol there, uh, the fact that we're doing both a hammer on and pull off. And um, if we move on to line three, we have what I think is one of Steve's coolest licks. Um, that on albums, I think it's only on Too Late For Love at the end that he uses. But he's used it a couple of times live, he uses it here. I think he used it on the live version of Mirror Mirror and um, also that performance of Lady Strange in France in like 83. The line three should sound something like this. Okay, so we're actually going to move our home position just ever so slightly on these licks here. First finger is going to stay in the 12th fret. We're going to slide it down. That's what that little line going down the way it uh, means and then from the 11th we're going to slide it back up to 12. so we're only picking once during this and then we have the 15th of the b we do the slide again 15th of the um e afterwards and i'm um fretting those with my pinky there i think that's easier way to kind of make it sound clearer in a more comfortable hand position so if you're not used to using your pinky that's maybe a good place to start introducing it Notice the last two notes of that line, the 12 and 15, the little double stop chord there. And we're putting vibrato on both of them. And that's really for like a whammy bar vibrato. And, but if you don't have one, you can just try and just get a bit of wiggle with your fingers. It shouldn't matter too much. All right, sorry, excuse the jump cut there. Um, it's kind of cold weather here and my guitar is going out of tune the more I play it. So I just had to tune it back down there. Anyway, so line four. This is like the main Steve Clark solo lick that I've done a video on in the past. Um... But now I think I finally got it dead on what it should sound like. Um, so I'll play it through again at moderate pace and uh, we'll hear what it's like. Um, it's 
kind of hard to play these licks slow down because you maybe don't quite get the groove of it, but hopefully that should explain what's written down there in that tab. Anyway, so when I first made a video on this lick, I used to play that opening part like this. Um, I used to play it over three strings, which I thought made sense, but it turns out, and I later put this on my tab for the photograph right out, um, that he starts on the 14th fret and he bends it with his first finger, so that's his new home position. Um, which makes sense actually, I mean, like I said, normally you wouldn't bend with your first finger, but uh, in the context of this lick and just the sequence of it, it kind of makes sense to start it there. Um, but it's not until recently that I noticed that there's just a slight change in the sequence, which seems to just make sense to me now. Um, but what's odd is that it's just, it just seems unconventional that he'd break this kind of sequence or like this little pattern, you know, we're kind of doing the same thing. We're just going between the G and B strings, sliding down and playing notes between the strings. But there's a point in there where he just breaks the sequence and it just makes it flow a lot easier. Cause before I used to have to incorporate like a little skip just to make it like work in time. But now it makes absolute sense. And I can't believe I never noticed it before. Um, so the point where it's changed now is um, after we slide down to the ninth fret, he plays the 12th fret of the B again. So I'll, I'll play up to that point. So starting on the 14th, we get to this ninth fret. Before, I would want to play the 10th fret of the B, but now he plays the 12th fret of the B again. He breaks the sequence. And then when he slides down to the seventh fret, he plays the tenth fret of the um, the B. And for some reason, that just makes it flow a lot easier. And I can't believe I never no like noticed that before. So, which makes me think now that like it's the same. He plays it the same way for the um, for the outro on "Too Late for Love," and uh, maybe it's the same way on uh, "Coming Under Fire." Cause those are the other two songs where he uses this like, and it's a really cool lick. So. Um, to finally get it properly nailed down, like, well, I hope it's probably nailed down. You'll see another video in a couple of months where I go back and do this again. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, hopefully this should be it. So. I mean, maybe I need to play up the speed to get the rhythm. So it's kind of like... It's more... Yeah, that's it there. Okay, so we move on to line five. Um, simple enough, it's just, we're making use, back in that home position of the 12th fret, making use of these double stop chords. <laughs> Nothing much to point out, you just want to bar the 12th fret of the G and B with your first finger. And then if I'm playing two of the chords together, on the second one, I'll put a slight bend on it, you know. Um, it's just a little subtle thing that you might find helps. Uh, move on to line six. Now this is where I would kind of change it the way I used to play it and just kind of do my own little thing. But um, I think he plays something like this now. Uh, in fact, I'll play the line before just to get me in, in the kind of um, rhythm of it. Okay, now I'm sure that uh, the way I've written on line six is how he does it at the Denver show, you know, the one on the End Around concert DVD. Um, but when I was trying to like listen to bootlegs to determine what he was actually playing here, because I'm still a bit unsure on a couple of notes here and there, um, I found that he'd actually sometimes vary it with uh, another lick, which I've put right at the bottom of the page, um, which is kind of funny because it's, you know, it's always been the bit that I've kind of had a hard time figuring out. And looking through bootlegs where you have a clearer audio, um, he actually plays something different. Uh, so I thought I'd make a note of it. So the bottom line six should be something like this. And this is just a variation you can put in if you want. Just kind of goes up to those uh, three notes on the high E string. Um, I'll try and play it with line five to kind of get in the rhythm again. Cause it, 
they might not sound good on its own there. So line five into the bottom line uh, should be something like this. Okay, something like that. Um, you might need to check a couple of bootlegs. I can't remember which ones I listened to, um, but I'll put a link in the description of uh, what I was trying to compare it to. Okay, if we go to line seven, uh, this is the kind of little shreddy part, which I couldn't quite figure out what it used to do. You can kind of hear the, the main notes he does, but um, you know, you, you want to get an idea of the actual lick so you can put them in practice. And I think this is what he does, uh, which is how I've written it. It's like you pick every note, but I'll show a couple of variations which maybe help out if you can't quite do that yet. But line seven should be something like this. Okay, once again, slow. Um, so, of course, up to speed, that little bit at the start, the 13, 12, 14, you know, it's... And you might need to try and develop your alternate pick in the, to get up to speed. But what you could do is you could just do like a pull-off at 13, 12. So you're just picking the 13th and the 14th. And that might make it a little bit easier. Or if you want to keep it um, picking, um, but you don't want to go between the two strings, you just uh, play 13, 12, and then 10 on the B string. And you have to slide up to the 15th. But you might find that's easier to do. It's all about what's comfortable for yourself. Um, if we move on to line 8, again, we're kind of doing the the double stop thing again uh, should sound something like this and that's pretty much the end of the solo so I kind of skipped past it but the, the second half of line 7 I'm not 100% sure that this is what he plays but it's something like that I was just kind of hitting um, the kind of main marks of what I heard at certain points so it sounded like he was ending on that last 14th note of the uh, the fourteenth fret of the D string, and then it goes into the start of the eighth line, the twelve fourteen of the D. That's what I was hearing. So I was I was trying to just work out something in there in that rhythm. But I mean, you could play anything you want there. Um, if I was to kind of vary it of line seven into line eight, you know, you could do. You know, something like that. Just whatever works for you. Right, so uh, what I'll do now is I'll maybe play it all at a moderate pace and um, maybe try and play along and we'll see how it sounds. So it should be something like this. From the date on which I've done this video, this is how I think the solo should be played. I might find later on that I'll um, find a new way to play one of these licks. That seems to happen in a lot of my videos. I mean, I don't often find a new way to play something, but I can guarantee it's as soon as I've posted the video in which I've just done it. Um, in fact, what I'll do now is I'll uh, I'll play along to the actual in the end audio as well, so you can hear up to speed. Um, but I might change my guitar because this keeps going out of tune, so bear with me one sec. <laughs> 